The challenge of decarbonising our existing commercial building stock is not an easy one. It's now accepted that heat pumps are going to be the main technology to do this. The challenges of implementing heat pumps are both economical and practical. The cost of electricity is much greater than the cost of gas, and so we need the very best efficiencies from heat pumps to either equal or improve upon the running costs of our existing systems. We are at Wincanton Hospital today to look at a system which has faced those exact challenges which I've just mentioned. This building presents the exact challenges that we've just been talking about. The building is old, it's been extended, it's been refurbished. We really don't know the continuity of the insulation within the building. We don't know whether the radiators need the high water temperature that we would have got from the um, oil-fired boiler which was actually here before. The most efficient heat pumps are ones which work with low temperature water. However, if we were to connect one of those directly to, to this heating system running at say 45 degrees, the radiators wouldn't get as hot as what they would have done with water at 80 degrees feeding through them. The consultant could have done a full survey of the building. They could have worked out a heat loss of absolutely every room. They could have measured the radiators to see whether the radiator could deliver more heat into, into the building or the amount of heat which is required into each room at that lower water temperature. But this would have been purely theoretical. We don't know the continuity of the insulation in, in the building. So whether a radiator set at a temperature is going to heat that room or not is in, in part slightly guesswork. It's likely that large parts of the building that have been fed with this 80 degree water do need 80 degree water in the radiators as it stands at the moment with the current insulation values, with the current radiators. For this reason, we needed a heat pump which could give an 80 degree flow temperature. There are single stage air to water heat pumps which can give a flow temperature of 80 degrees C. However, they're not that efficient. The sort of SCOP efficiency that we can get for these is less than two, probably about 1.8. Take a gas or oil fired boiler out and put one of these in, it, in its place, and it's likely to cost double to run. For this reason, our discussions with the consultant led us to providing a, a cascade heat pump system. The cascade heat pump system is a two stage heat pump system. It uses an air source heat pump to generate water at a low temperature which then gets fed to a buffer vessel that buffer vessel then provides water to water to water heat pumps which take that low grade water uses the vapor compression cycle to boost that up to a higher temperature and in this case up to 80 degrees the air to water heat pump has got a refrigerant in it which evaporates efficiently at quite a low temperature and then the water to water heat pump has got a refrigerant in it which will evaporate at high temperature really efficiently. The two working together give you a much more efficient solution than what you would get with a conventional heat pump, which takes it all the way to 80 degrees. As we said before, the sort of SCOP that we'll get out of a, a conventional heat pump doing single stage 80 degrees is going to be less than two. With one of these systems, we can get to 2.6 or 2.7. So now let's look at the system in a little bit more detail. The heating process starts with the air source units. So let's get out there and take a look at those first. The air to water heat pumps here, there's three of them. They're producing water at 45 degrees. They use R454B refrigerant, which is a low GWP refrigerant. The GWP being 466. The three heat pumps here, they've got flow and returns coming out of them, which feed into this, this big header here, which then the pipework leads into the plant room. So the flow and return pipe work from the air source heat pumps enter the plant room here. We've got the flow which runs across here. The, the water from the heat pumps are being pulled by this pump here. It's a run and standby pump, so there is a fault with the pump we've got back up there. That, that drags the water to this buffer vessel. And with the air source heat pumps, we're maintaining this at 45 degrees. We've got the return going out, out of the bottom, which runs back to where we showed you just before. On this side of the buffer vessel, we've got the flow 
which goes to the water to water heat pumps and the return which comes back from, from the water to water heat pumps. So this flow pipe work runs right across the top of here. We've got a strainer in here to collect any, any dirt in the system. We've then got the pump which is pulling the water off that buffer vessel and it goes back along here. That pipe work continues up at high level along here and then drops down to these one, two, three water to water heat pumps. The water from the air source heat pumps is passed to, to the water to water heat pump here. There's a plate heat exchanger here which exchanges the, the heat from the water then onto a secondary refrigerant circuit which is inside this unit. So there's a compressor in there which uses that water to evaporate a refrigerant and give off a higher temperature. We then have coming off this side of the heat pump high temperature water which as I say could be as high as 80 degrees. At the moment we've got it set at 67 degrees um, but like I say it's got the capability to go higher. We're in, we're in the summer at the moment, we're only heating domestic hot water and so we've only got a need to be at that temperature. We've then got some more flow and return pipe work which comes from those three water to water units. We've got a pump which is pulling water off them and that water is then pumped into the building where there's another buffer vessel which feeds the heating system. Cascade heat pump systems like the one here at Wincanton Hospital can provide hot water at the same temperature as a conventional fossil fuel boiler. If you couple them with on-site generated electricity like solar PV, they will cost about the same to run as a gas-fired boiler. The ultimate intention should be, with time, to improve the fabric of the building, to reduce the amount of heat actually required, to replace the radiators or other heat emitters so that they can run on a, from a low temperature heat source and then eventually switch the system over from running at that high temperature to a low temperature. That's not going to mean buying new equipment. We'll be able to use the air source heat pumps, which are currently in, in place, to feed the heating system directly without those cascade water to water heat pumps. Those cascade water to water heat pumps can then be repurposed and used on another site where we start that same process again. If you'd like to explore whether Cascade heat pumps are right for your project, please get in contact with us at info at icgheatpumps.co.uk. You can visit our website www.icgheatpumps.co.uk. You can send us a message on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Facebook or on Instagram.